Hi and welcome back. I want to respond today to an email that was sent out recently by my colleague Rebecca Leone that specifically asked the question on um, roll up versus short spine. Where does the weight go? And it's a great question. And uh, so there are a couple things that I thought were really great about what Rebecca was saying, and the, uh, there are a couple things that really sort of struck me. Wow, well, it really depends upon where you're looking from, what response you'll get. Um, and Rebecca was uh, asserting that in her Ramana based training, that she wasn't taught spine safety and really doesn't know that spine safety is taught at all in the Pilates community, um, and that she was doing the spine safety. So uh, my response is that um, respectfully that's not my experience. I actually was trained in the Ramana lineage, uh, that's my background, and my experience was that the a, a very deep understanding of um, being in your whole body was there uh, on many levels. And what I found was missing was um, a deeper understanding of core coordination rather than core control. And I feel this is a, a, deep, a deep piece that I want to speak to right now because I feel, Rebecca, that you're speaking more about core control uh, coming from core as torso. And that's a more biomechanical way of looking at the body. It's valid. And yet there's another way of looking, which is from the tensegrity perspective, and that's from a biointelligent perspective of core coordination. How does the whole body work together? And how does the roll-up have another expression? So the, where I would be looking from is how does the weight, yes, the weight is moving down, moving through, but how are the limbs actually connected to core through a way that I'm relating gravity? One of the things that you mentioned is the floor is not your friend. And that's a huge difference between biomechanics and biointelligence that with biomechanics, there is a fighting gravity needed. I've got to do something to fight gravity. In biointelligence, you're not fighting. You're actually yielding to gravity. There's a deep understanding. It's not a collapse. It's a yield. And that's creating lift. So, for instance, within the roll-up, I'm not collapsing, but rather I'm supporting. This weight is part of me, but the weight is also in my hands, is relating to the space around me. And that is giving me lift through my spine. Right away, I didn't do anything to my feet. My feet responded to my hands reaching. The reach gives me grounding. And as I begin to roll, I can also feel the support of my psoas as I roll. As I come up, you're right, I'm not going to collapse. I'm going to reach into the, the space that I also get the, the grounding through my psoas, my, my primordial spine, and the grounding through my legs. How do my, the reach through my feet, the down the back as I call it, shoulder blade, sit bone, tailbone, into the tripod of the foot. How does that give me inner ankle to inner ear, which takes me into my deep spine as I roll? Now, you also made a point that this joint is meant for that kind of load. You're right. 
The reason that short spine is so difficult for so many people is because, and roll up can be really difficult for so many people, is because the upper body doesn't know how to stabilize. And most people in the roll up, most people are locked in, people who can't do the roll up are locked in extension in somewhere in their spine and unable to release and get backing, not collapse, but get backing that allows the two directions to support the spine. With a, ro with a uh, short spine, if someone is not able to, in roll-up, support, um, to roll up and, and, and move through just the way that I showed, so you're actually getting that two directions through the spine working well, and they go into short spine, they're not going to be able to lift the legs from that core coordination of hand to foot, head to foot, whole body tensegrity. And so most people will start lifting like this because they don't have the support of ground. So rather than the floor not being my friend, the floor is my partner. That's what's different in biointelligence. So I would create upper core support. I would open up the shoulders, soften the front of my front ribs. This is often what's missing in short spine. Feel the softening. Now I'm grounded. Then I've got my double spiral. Upper, butt, upper arm is open, lower arm is grounded. And then from there, and notice that I've put a little a pad under here, which is really good for most people to feel initially because if you can't get the back of your arm connected to the waterfall of your shoulder blade down your back, you'll never get your chest open, you'll never soften and widen your eyes, you'll never get a feeling of widening, which allows lift to happen from a very deep place. So that feeling of, you can tell my throat is, I'm not on my neck, I'm on my support through my shoulders, through my arms. And imagine I'm in the straps, sit bone to heel. Rolls me down. And I'm not collapsed. I'm still in my internal support and my feet are still actively connected to my head. So everything is working in concert. It's a core coordination of the whole body in relationship to gravity, which is very, very powerful. So let me give you a little bit of another demonstration just for people who are really interested in how do you cultivate that feeling of the reach the reach like I did with the weights. How do you get that feeling of the reaching forward with the drop down and get it on a, how do the springs help you to feel that? Let's look at that too. Hi again. So here I am. You'll notice the setup is a little unusual. I'm, first of all, I've extended my spine through the way that I'm allowing the springs to support me and I'm using this wonderful Arcus bar, which I love, which gives a more three-dimensional sensation to the hands and gives me a more lateral, a more lateral, more space. This is another thing that I feel is often missing in Pilates is how do we, how do we uh, open to our spaciousness? How do we create reach without effort, without extra effort. So that's a big thing that you're going to be noticing is where is, is one of the principles of biointelligence moving from a more bio, biointelligent perspective is what's just enough effort for the movement. We're not controlling the core, we're releasing into gravity with support, with the whole body support. So I'm sensing the weight, it's a weight shift 
not a collapse. As I release the down the back from my shoulder blade, sit bone, tailbone into the tripod of the foot is releasing my spine. And I feel, just like Rebecca said, I feel more of the weight around my hip sockets, not pushing into each, each disc in my spine. And then from there, I feel my feet, feel the weight into my hips, and from there, I feel the front of my spine float me up without gripping my abdominals. It's a natural new way of looking at the powerhouse. How do we not control the abdominals? How do we allow the exhale to support a full body extension that's natural? The body will stabilize as much as it needs to stabilize as it moves because the body is deeply intelligent. It knows how to support itself when we relate to gravity and space in a way that allows the grounding into the feet and the lift through the crown of the head to happen naturally. So you can see that it wasn't all about a lot of effort for me to stand up from that place of grounding. So lower core, central core, and upper core are all working together, which is what we call the three core connections. But this isn't a belief system. This is a perspective. And notice that's a very important thing that I'm pointing out, which is I'm very clear that this is a perspective that I'm sharing and that I'm being guided by to develop a deep understanding of my body and how I can work with clients and teachers in a way that's very empowering. And the distinction that I really wanted to point out right now is that we can do that in a way and share with one another and collaborate with one another in ways that don't make one another wrong. There's a way to build on the past. I can question some of the things that I, was, that I had in my training that may not have been as updated as what I know now, but it doesn't make them wrong. It just makes what I know now fresher and it's actually more mature. It's a more mature understanding of layering in my own understanding. And that's a distinction that really creates wisdom. Very different than right, wrong. I'm right, you're wrong, that's wrong. And so that's a really, that's a great opportunity for us to, to look at how can we question? How can we challenge one another? How can we be with one another in ways that we're learning and, and knowing that we're really supporting uh, developing a greater wisdom with the incredible body of work that we're studying and that, that feeds every discipline. So there's a quote by Rumi that really deeply uh, feeds me in a lot of ways and that speaks to what we're talking about here. And that is, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there's a field. I'll meet you there. Thank you. <laughs>